Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. So today I'm going to take you through what goes in my kit for when I'm going out for a day's hike and a wild camp. Stay tuned, let's see what I take. Okay, ladies and gents, thanks ever so much for uh, clicking on the video and welcome back. So this is episode two. It's a follow on from my previous video, um, which was how to plan for uh, your routes for a day's hiking and for a wild camp. I'll put a link just up here to the video. Um, so it might be worth just watching that first. So it's about using um, free online tools that we can use to help assist in our route what our route consists of and also how high the ascent that our route's going to be. So in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I plan what I'm going to take. So this is again for a day's hike and a wild camp. So depending on what I'm going to take also depends on what the weather's going to be like, what the terrain's going to be like and also how far I'm actually going to be hiking. Along with this, I always keep a massive eye on the weather forecast. I've been caught out numerous times before where the BBC have said that it's going to be fair weather, it's going to be cloudy, but there's not going to be any rain. But yet, I've had it before where I've had to retreat to my tent because I've had no waterproofs with me and I've been caught out in the elements. So yeah, from that, that was a lesson learned. So what I normally do to begin with is I make a list. So I normally get the computer open and I start typing away and I make a list of what I need really. So that's ranging from my shelter to my sleeping, to my food, to my cooker, any additional types of clothing that I'll need. And then once I've done that, you'll see my finished little article. Okay, so you've just seen my list there then. So the first one on the list there was the tent. So what tent to choose if you're a newbie to wild camping. I've been through uh, plenty of tents then in my time. Now the first tent I began with was a Van Gogh Banshee 200. I used to think that was an absolute bomb-proof tent. Highly rated it. It was a Duke of Edinburgh recommended tent. But then I started exploring a few more other tents and certainly found my favourite up to now, which is the Lanshan 2. The Lanshan 2 has been out with me. Heavy rain, thunder, lightning, strong winds, and I certainly recommend a Lanshan 2 tent for a beginner for wild camping. Okay, so next on the agenda then is a sleeping bag. Now, if you're gonna be camping all year round, I certainly suggest a four season sleeping bag. Something that's got a really good uh, rating for comfort and limit. Now for me, I've been through plenty of sleeping bags and now I found the perfect one. So through the winter, I'll use my North Face Goose Down sleeping bag. It is the North Face Blue Kazoo. And then coming into spring and autumn, I shall use my Alpkit Sky High 500. I've only used that once, it was in minus one. And it was a fantastic bit of kit. It kept me lovely and warm during the night. And during the summer, what I'm using now is a quilt. So I'm just gonna be using a quilt. It's got a little foot box at the end. So yeah. If you're after a sleeping bag and you're going to be doing camping all the way through, my suggestion would be to buy a decent sleeping bag from the off and ensure that you're lovely and warm through them nights. Which brings us on to the next item. I've just bought the Xbed down mat. It is the medium sized one. It is filled with a little bit of down as well. It has got an R rating of 4.7, so it will keep you quite warm during them colder months. Now again, if you're a side sleeper like me, I can suggest the Trekology Aluft 2. I've used that pillow twice now, and it's been a very comfortable uh, pillow. I do suffer with my neck, trying to get my neck at different angles, and that my neck has to be in a, a decent angle to sleep. And I found that the Trekology Aluft 2 is an absolute perfect pillow for me to get that good night's sleep. Okay, so next on the agenda then is my cook kit. Now I've got different amounts of cook kits, different types, come in various shapes and sizes. I've got two favourites, first one being the Jetboil Flash. Now that boils water in absolute rapid time, but it is only really good for boiling water. But this is my preferred choice for when I'm out on a multi-day trip. That'll bring us on to um, 
to the food that I take. So the food that I take is mainly all dehydrated or wet pouch meals, which only really require heating up. Okay, so we're gonna look at clothes now then. What clothes would you take on a wild camp? Well, for me, through um, trial and error really, and obviously the great British weather, I always like to pack some base layer bottoms and also a base layer top. This is just a change of clothing for me to get into if I'm wet through and also to sleep in as well if they are not wet. Definitely advise some waterproofs. So the waterproofs I take are a crag hopper jacket and I do have some Burghouse pack light bottoms as well. They're Gore-Tex and they've served me absolutely brilliant. Also for them chilly nights as well, I have a down jacket. The down jacket was from Decathlon fantastic jacket that I've had um, I think it was around the 50 pound mark and it's kept me warm in them sub-zero temperatures never forget as well hat and gloves that's a must the amount of times we've been stood outside in an evening enjoying the night with the other guys and the temp temperature drops which means the head and the fingers get a little bit chilly for everything I use personally there'll be links in the description below okay so next on the list then you may have to find yourself a power bank so a power bank is something that carries electrical charge and it will be able to power up or recharge the likes of your phone, maybe some GPS if it's um, rechargeable batteries. So I always take the Anchor Power Core. It wasn't the cheapest, but it does the job. It has two USB ports. It's rechargeable. It takes about eight to nine hours to recharge though. But the good thing about this is it's small, it's lightweight, and I can get roughly two and a half to three charges, depending on how severe my battery is um, depleted, uh, out of the power core. So this is my chosen uh, power bank, which has been with me for the best part of 18 months now, and it's never failed me. So for something to do in those areas that you've got no phone signal, I do like to take my little MP3 player. It does have a little slot for an SD card and I'm able then just to download any songs that I want. Um, so I've got about a thousand songs on this MP3 player, but it's good for me to listen to some music, just something to chill out to. Okay, so I also like to take a lightweight table as well. So this lightweight table I've got is the Cascade Wild Table. It is 65 grams, that's all. And it's made out of like a corrugated plastic. Um, does have a good um, load rating as well. I think it's about four to five kilograms. So that's enough for me to put my jet boil on, uh, even with water in to cook away. Okay, so the head torch I use then. Now the head torch is an LED lenser. I'm a massive fan of this head torch. You can adjust the brightness. You can have it in a transport mode so it doesn't turn on in your rucksack. But also as well, it has the zoom function. So you can have a nice wide beam pattern or you can have a nice narrow beam pattern. So this is my choice for a head torch. I've been on numerous night navigations, which I haven't recorded, uh, and it has served me well. So separate from the head torch then, I do have a tent torch. And this is the Goal Zero Lighthouse. It is an absolute fantastic uh, torch, it really is. I did a review on it not so long ago, so if you trail back through a few videos, you'll be able to see it. I've not even used it on full brightness because it kicks out such a lot of light. So when I have it hanging in my tent, I only really have it on 50% power and that is ample. It lights the tent up enough to see. Okay, so something you need to think about then is how much water you're going to carry. If you carry three litres of water, that's an extra three kilograms. Some people might find carrying it is absolutely fine, but for me personally, I don't like carrying a lot of weight. So what I do find, which I failed to mention previously on episode one, was when I'm out on the trail and when I'm planning routes, I do also try and look for water sources. So OS Maps gives a clear indication of like a blue line to where a water source may be. And that gives me the opportunity then to fill up. Now to fill up, you've got to filter that water. You, you, you can't be sure of where it's come from. You can't be sure if there's been a dead sheep halfway up. So for me, and probably a lot of people out there as well, I use a soya squeeze. I did used to use the soya mini. That served me well, but the soya squeeze has a better flow rate and it's a little bit chunky, but it also appears just a little bit lighter as well, in, in my opinion. But I like to use a CNOC pouch. 
Now the CNOC is probably what you're just seeing now. Um, it's a two litre bag and that just fits into the back of mesh of my rucksack. It is a universal adaption. Sawyer uh, squeeze will fit straight onto it. So yeah, any type of water, it's always best to have some sort of filtration with it. So the Sawyer squeeze and the CNOC works perfect for me. Now a hygiene kit, is small toothpaste, a travel toothbrush and a very small antiperspirant deodorant. You've got to be rolling into these places nice and fresh, haven't you? It's also important as well, even though that you have planned your route, it's always good practice to take some sort of map and a compass of the area with you as well. So I always take an OS map and a compass with me. Failing that, if I don't have the map of the area, what I will do is I can print that map off from the OS Maps website. So when you've planned your route and you're happy with it, you can print that map off. So if I haven't got a map of the area, I will always take a printed version of the map with me. Now the trekking poles I use are Caramel. They're around £30 from Sports Direct. Now with the tent that I use, the Lanshan 2, it is important I take them trekking poles um, because the Lanshan 2 tent uses the trekking poles to prop it up with. So the Lanshan 2 tent comes with no poles. Um, you have to use your trekking poles to pop it up with. But these trekking poles, um, they've served me well. I've had these now for a good 18 months. Not snapped, not broken. There's been no issues with them. They've been an absolute fantastic bit of kit. They really have. So I will continue to use these and when one breaks I will just replace with another set because they've been that good. Also my first aid kit. You can go out and buy any first aid kit just ensure that you have the correct items in there that you may require. Me personally I've made a customization to my first aid kit. I'm not going to show you now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that in a separate video uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that after. But yeah, my first aid kit consists of some bandages, some plasters, some comp a compete stick, some ibuprofen, paracetamol, pseudocrem. I even go to that length because we don't like any chafing really, do we? But yeah, I've made my own um, first aid kit and it's just in a little Ziploc bag. And also in that as well, I carry some tick removal tools because those little things, you don't want to be hiking around for days with them attached to you. Okay, so that's it then. That's gone through the contents of what I take on a wild camp. Sometimes it does differ depending on the location we're going, whether we're going on an extremely long hike or whether it's going to be a short hike. But everything that you've seen in the sections there that's on my list, I'm going to be reviewing each section individually. So the follow-on from this video then, I will be reviewing my tent, my sleep pad, my sleeping bag and the pillow. And that will come as a one video and then episode four will then move on to my cook kit and my other types of cook kit that I'll take as well. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope it might be of some benefit to you. Um, if you do like the video, please consider hitting that subscribe button, but also, more importantly, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs down, but more importantly, do it twice. Thanks ever so much for joining me. Hope it's been some sort of help to those of you that are new into wild camping and hiking as well. I'll see you on another lockdown adventure with me, Dave Outdoors. Take care.